Hello good day viewers. In this tutorial we are going to evaluate these four symmetrical functions of quadratic root. We are given that alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic equation 2x squared plus 7x plus 5 equal to 0. We are asked to evaluate 1 divided by alpha plus 1 divided by beta, alpha squared plus beta squared, 1 divided by alpha squared plus 1 divided by beta squared and lastly alpha minus beta all squared. Whenever you are given problem like this, it is not necessary that you have to find the roots. You know definitely you have to get two roots which are alpha and beta before you substitute them here. That is not necessary. Alright, let me show you how to do that. The only two things you need to find are the sum and the product of that roots. So the sum, sum of roots, meaning you should add the two roots together, alpha plus beta. And the sum of roots has its own formula, which is what? Minus b divided by a. b is the coefficient of x, while a is the leading coefficient. Therefore, this is our a and this is our b. So since we have minus b divided by a, it is equivalent to what? Minus 7 divided by 2. So this is minus 7 divided by 2 and hence if you solve that quadratic equation add the two roots together you have to get minus 7 divided by 2. Then the product of roots product of roots is alpha multiplied by beta which has its own formula as c divided by a. C is the constant term and A is the leading coefficient. So we have the constant term divided by the leading coefficient, which is 5 divided by 2. All right. So we have this to be 5 divided by 2. So we are going to be using the sum and the product to evaluate all these four symmetrical functions. Let me start with the first one, which is 1 divided by alpha plus 1 divided by beta. So the first one, we are asked to evaluate 1 divided by alpha plus 1 divided by beta. The only thing I would like to remind you is that we only have the sum and the product. Every expression given to you, you have to transform it in terms of sum and the product. And that's what we are going to do now. To add these fractions, it is very simple if the denominators are the same. But this time around, they are not. So to make the denominators the same, this one can be multiplied by beta over beta such that we have alpha beta to the bottom and this one we multiplied by alpha we multiply by alpha if you simplify this you have uh, to the top beta times 1 is beta divided by beta times alpha is alpha beta then plus this will give us alpha divide by alpha beta so since the denominators are the same we are free to add the numerators this is equal to beta plus alpha is the same thing as alpha plus beta so we have alpha plus beta divide by one of the denominators which is alpha times beta so you can see this is sum and this is product always try to transform your expression in terms of sum and the product now we come back substitute Remember that the sum is what? Negative 7 over 2, while the product is 5 over 2. So for the sum, which is negative 7 over 2, I would like to use this division sign. Then the product is 5 over 2. And since they have the same denominators, you can cancel them and divide the numerators. Finally, we have negative 7 divided by 5. And hence, this is the solution to the first problem. Let us move on to the second one. We are asked to evaluate alpha squared plus beta squared. Alpha squared plus beta squared. I would like to let you know that this is not the same thing as alpha plus beta whole squared. They are not the same place. But we know that if we expand this, we have to get two times that correspond to this. So let's do that. So if we have alpha plus beta 
whole squared, this is the same thing as alpha squared plus beta squared plus 2 alpha times beta. This is the expansion of this. If you like, you can do that. You take the first term, you square that. Second term squared, two times the first term times the second term. This is binomial expansion. But remember that this is exactly what we are looking for. So we can make it the subject by taking this one to the left-hand side. So it's like saying that the whole of this minus this is this, right? So alpha squared plus beta squared is nothing but alpha plus beta whole squared minus 2 alpha beta. All right, so let us back substitute. Remember, we only need the sum and the product. The sum is what? Negative 7 divided by 2. But because of this power of 2, we have to square that. Then minus 2 multiplied by the product, which is 5 over 2. Uh, negative 7 squared is 49. Divide by 2 squared is 4. Minus, I will not cancel this for a purpose. 2 times 5 is 10. Divide by 2. To have common denominators, we can multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2. So this becomes 49. Divide by 4. Minus 20. Divide by 4. Um, since we have common denominators, we can say that 49 minus 20, which is 29, 29 divided by 4. And hence, this is nothing but alpha squared plus beta squared. That is the second problem. Then the third problem, we ask to evaluate 1 divided by alpha squared plus 1 divided by beta squared. 1 divided by alpha squared plus 1 divided by beta squared. The same thing, we are going to make the denominators the same. I can multiply the top and the bottom by beta squared, beta squared. And for this, alpha squared, alpha squared, just to have common denominators. So this time this will give us beta squared, beta squared, divide by this time this will give us alpha squared, beta squared, plus this time this is alpha squared, divide by alpha squared, beta squared, right? So since the denominators are the same, we can add the numerators. I can start by writing alpha squared plus beta squared squared then divide by you know one of the denominators but according to one of the laws of indices we can assign them a single exponent since they have the same exponent we can write this as alpha beta whole squared so now we can back substitute i don't have to suffer myself simplifying this because remember we obtained this previously i think in the second problem look at it here alpha squared plus beta squared is 29 divided by 4 so I can just bring it back here. This is equal to 29 divided by 4. Divide by, remember the product is what? 5 over 2. 5 over 2. But what? Whole squared. This is 29 divided by 4. Divide by 5 squared is 25. Divide by 2 squared is 4. And since we have common denominators, we can divide the numerators. This is what? 29 divided by 25, which is 1 divided by alpha squared plus 1 divided by beta squared. Then the last problem. The last problem, we are asked to evaluate alpha minus beta whole squared. So we have alpha minus beta whole squared. If you observe, this is difference of two roots, not sum of two roots. Therefore, let us expand it. We take the first term, we square that. We take the second term, we square that. Then minus, because of that minus sign, 2 times the first term times the second term. This is what? The expansion of alpha minus beta whole squared. But remember, we have something like this previously in the second problem. Let us bring it back. 
alpha squared plus beta squared is what? 29 divided by 4. We just got lucky that we have simplified this previously. This is 29 over 4 minus the product, remember, is 5 divided by 2, but this is 2 times 5 divided by 2. All right. This is equal to 29 divided by 4 minus 10 divided by 2. We multiply the top by 2, the bottom by 2, just to have common denominators. This is 29 divided by 4 minus 20, right? 20 divided by 4. And uh, 29 minus 20 is um, 9. So this is 9 over 4. And hence, alpha minus beta whole squared is nothing but 9 over 4. But if you want to confirm all these solutions, you can solve that quadratic equation uh, given to us, which is this one. Then substitute one of the solution with alpha and the second one with beta. Simplify all these four symmetrical functions to see whether these solutions are really true or not. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye-bye.